I have not been able to get an upcoming game out of my head. As the title suggests, that game is the upcoming Old Gods of Appalachia from Monty Cook Games and Deep Nerd Media, which has smashed its Kickstarter, and here I'm going to talk about why it's got me, a girl who mostly plays science fantasy games, so excited. For a long time, I've personally wanted to play or run a game that was certainly a fantasy setting, but one perhaps more adjacent to our society, and one that deals with themes of folklore and magic that exist just beyond a society we can more directly relate to. Something that's definitely not a medieval fantasy setting with magic that plays to epic hero stories, but is instead something that feels familiar. Something where we can assume the roles of characters we might more directly relate to wrapped up in scenarios that stretch our understanding of reality. I'm also really excited about the fact that this game uses the cipher system, which I'll make a case for as the perfect set of rules for what this game aspires to be in just a moment. I grew up and live in New York City, but I did spend many years of my youth in Northeast Pennsylvania. I also spent a number of years traveling to different areas of the country in my 20s, and as anyone who's been in these spaces can tell you, there is a genuine magic in the woods. I'm a hardline skeptic and don't put much belief in ghost stories or magic or anything of that sort, but I'd be lying if I said that I haven't on more than one occasion heard things in the woods at night that made me feel uncomfortable. Wilderness, the expanse of land with complex relationships relationships to society, it has its own kind of magic in the way that we see and experience it. And at least for my own interests, playing out stories that allow us to move past the boundaries of our scientific reality is something of great interest to me. This is a kind of setting I've been searching for for some time. Settings like World of Darkness certainly have gotten me close to this, but those games tend to circle around the theater of their own fiction of vampire clans and werewolf tribes, and really werewolf might be the only one that cuts close to this, and that one quickly ditches a grounded kind of folklore for its own stories and interests. And while I would say that the system World of Darkness games uses is something that I've liked for role-playing, when things get a little complicated, i.e. combat or conflict breaks out, well, I'll put it this way, in my last game of Werewolf, I had to build out an Excel spreadsheet to help us move through the steps of combat a little bit more easily. I'm glad that this game isn't in 5e. This clearly is a setting about rhetoric, thematic essence, and narrative weight. This feels like a story-based game if there ever was one. And while many systems have done this well, the Cypher system strikes that balance of giving the mechanics needed to tap into some more mechanical scenarios, be those combat or other more concrete challenges, while elevating the power of narrative and interpretation over that of math and pure simulation. The Cypher system plays with narrative concepts in a way that makes gamifying something rooted in folklore quite exciting. Cyphers themselves are those unique objects and narrative devices that can quickly change something. Might, speed, and intellect pools abstract the idea that a character is a finite source of energy and action, and allow for challenges that aren't merely about knocking down hit points. And GM intrusions, which while perhaps a little tricky for newcomers to fully get, are the perfect sort of narrative tool for a game that is about playing out folklore, playing out the thing that we can't really put words to, the whispers in the wind, the house in the forest that calls to you. This setting, if done right, can't be about classes and challenge ratings and monster abilities, but instead needs a system that deals with narrative concepts distilled into direct, simple rules that allow the flavor of the moment to take center stage over that of stacking modifiers and damage types. And unlike systems and settings that solidify magic systems as something that we can perfectly classify and understand with different schools of magic, having a lot more freedom, interpretation, and an overall level of crypt to the magic is really going to help Old Gods of Appalachia retain its mystery by not explaining everything away. We're not going to understand why an odd object contains magical power necessarily, it just will. We may not understand why a certain ritual works a certain way or what school of magic it belongs to, but that mystery and that unknowing is what draws us into the story. And being able to quickly assign levels to challenges will allow a table to be much more free in letting the narrative and experience of the story and the characters take center 
as opposed to the rules. All of this is to say that this is a kind of setting I have wanted to play in for a very long time, and I am thrilled to see something like this get a cipher system treatment. Based on the primer, it looks like we'll be seeing some new types such as the healer and preacher, which I think will really help set the tone a bit more easily than the cipher system's broader character types in the core rulebook. Expect a full review of Old Gods of Appalachia on this channel when the book hits our shelves in the near future, and definitely expect some actual plays of this game right here on the Infinite Construct. It will be a sort of change of programming for how things usually are here, but I hope you'll be as excited as I am to dive into such a lush, dark, and mysterious world where we can go from being grounded in a very relatable reality to pulling back the curtain on a universe that is in fact far more strange and horrifying than we could ever imagine.